It has been four years since we initiated this Symphonia project, a project that aims to develop methodologies and tools to assess the doses, risks, and harmful effects of radiation exposure during the management of lymphoma, breast, and brain tumors, focusing not only on patients, but also on healthcare workers, caregivers, companions, and the environment. We are now in the final phase of the project, and it is time to evaluate the results in all the work completed so far. When undergoing X-ray imaging or radiotherapy, it is essential to estimate the dose received by both the targeted organs and the surrounding organs to minimize and predict the associated risks. To achieve this, we have developed a range of dose estimation and prediction tools. Starting with iDose, a web-based tool that estimates and predicts organ doses from various X-ray modalities and also provides information about radiogenic risks. We have also developed innovative methods for dose reduction and patient-specific dose estimation for CT scanning and radiopharmaceutical therapies suitable for clinical implementation. Additionally, we have created a biokinetics model for PET imaging in brain tumor patients and a modular tool for estimating radiogenic risks. However, controlling radiation doses is critical not only for patients, but also for those in contact with them, such as workers in nuclear medicine departments. Therefore, exposure to new radioisotopes has been monitored, focusing on the doses received by their hands, eyes, and body. It has been found that lutetium-177 contributes less to finger doses compared to 68GA, which results in higher finger doses. However, it is still essential to monitor both isotopes and these processes carefully to better estimate individual dose and risk. To address these challenges and enhance monitoring, we have developed a dosimetry tool that creates digital twins of hands and syringes from videos taken during the routine practice of nuclear medicine workers. This tool allows for more precise dose calculations, thanks to the high tracking capability of the models, enabling the creation of dose maps for hands, which is useful for detecting hotspots. This methodology is particularly useful for training and monitoring nuclear medicine workers to achieve as low as reasonably achievable doses. The exposure to family members and caregivers of nuclear medicine patients has also been considered. We have developed software that incorporates flexible computational phantoms, allowing for a wide variety of postures, radionuclides, and combinations between the patient and the caregiver or family member. This flexibility ensures that the application of this tool is not limited to current radiopharmaceuticals, but can also be used to assess the doses received by caregivers of new radiopharmaceuticals approved for future treatments and diagnosis in nuclear medicine. In addition to dosimetry studies, we have also placed special emphasis on individual susceptibility to radiation. Each body reacts differently to radiation, resulting in varying individual susceptibility. The question we aim to answer is, does having had cancer before increase individual susceptibility? We collected blood samples from patients with primary cancer and secondary primary cancer before and at least twice after therapy, measuring DNA damage and repair. So far, the study indicates a large degree of both intra-individual and inter-individual variability. This research is still ongoing and is necessary to analyze all the results to draw conclusions. Lastly, we have also considered the environmental impact of these practices. We have developed a methodology to dynamically calculate dose rates for non-human biota and workers in water waste treatment plants. Using a conservative approach, all dose rates found are low, but it is necessary to continue improving control methods. And in the future, a pan-European screening assessment approach is needed. But all this couldn't have been possible without the collaboration among multiple partners from different locations. This has been possible thanks to the Symphonia cloud-based data repository, a platform designed to store, share, manage, and preview health data, both imaging and non-imaging, and to run AI models developed within the project. So we have identified gaps and good practices in dosimetry, radiobiology, and radiation protection education throughout Europe. And we have used this knowledge to provide education and training activities for PhD students, postdoctoral researchers, and trainees. And at the end of the project, an interactive and multidisciplinary massive open online course will also be available. But we don't want to stop there. 
we aim to continue disseminating the results obtained and create science-based recommendations on radiological protection to minimize risks and help improve the European healthcare system.